Fat Guy Flies RC here. Well, I'm back, and if you think, if you're my one of my regular uh, viewers or subscribers, you're thinking, well, you haven't really put much out lately here and there. Um, a lot of the videos I've put up and putting up have, have been from several weeks ago. Um, however, I went on a week's vacation. We took my precious wife to a, a cabin, and uh, we had a good time. And while we were gone, we hit couple of um, hobby shops we went to Atlanta hobby right outside just north of Atlanta we also went to hurricane uh, hurricane RC hobby shop in Jacksonville Florida one on the way up and one on the way down and I scored some new toys let me show you one that we're going to do an unboxing of right now Let's try folks it is the E-Flight A-10 Thunderbolt. I also got, I've already put them together, let me find them. The new, well not new, but the uh, F-15. Where I got her all, obviously, uh, put together Got a nice clear coater on her. She's all ready to go. Having, of course, I bought an, I bought an extra nose cone because the nose cones are famous. Now I've had this, I've had this jet before, but I got it when it was first released, and I honestly didn't know really how to fly it. I, I kind of messed up, and I really wasn't that well good at it. So I'm confident now that I've progressed enough in my skills to where I should be able to successfully fly this plane without any real issue um really didn't have any issue then i just it was too fast and too intimidating for me for my skill level at that time now i'm sure i'm just gonna absolutely love it so that's that that's not all i got hold on i got one more one more man one more yeah it was a very good trip for me rc wise i also picked up The P-39 by E-Flight. Um, I was going to do, I got this one at Hurricane Hobby, Hurricane RC there in Jacksonville. Um, I was going to do a build, an unbox video of it, but it was just so, such a simple build. I mean, two screws hold the elevator in. Um, the wing literally just sits down in the fuselage with a quick connect i mean it, it is such a fast and easy build I, I just didn't see a need honestly you, you hook up your elevator and with one one clevis back there and, and that's it and so i got it all set up by the manual i did give her a nice clear coat um so she's got a really nice uh, uh shine on her She's got the battery tray slide out that clock that clicks in really nice, and uh, but other than that, she just great play runs on 3s or 4s. Um, have not done any maiden on her yet. She hasn't been in the air yet either, and uh, so that's that. Oh. Had to uh, go in there, shop here, and I had to reconfigure a lot of stuff, moved a lot of stuff up, threw a lot of stuff away, reconfigure, give myself some more room. Like you see my T28 over here that I still have not flown yet, just waiting for good weather, hopefully very, very soon. But we are in the month, in the middle, of, middle of March now, and coming into April, and in April, March, most of March and most of April, weather in Florida is pretty temperature wise and it's nice out it's in the mid 70s and mid eight low 80s but very very windy during this time of the year I mean 12 mile 12 mile an hour plus and when you're wanting to maiden planes especially a plane like this that's expensive you want to try to start on a very calm day like six mile an hour or under if you can you know sometimes you don't have a choice um, but Hopefully I'll be able to maiden this soon, maybe in the early morning or in the evening or something. But uh, anyways, let's enough, enough my yapping. Let's uh, 
open this bad boy up. Now, all I did was I opened this up at the shop just to make sure everything looked nice. But other than that, she hasn't been taken apart. Come out, has not come out of the box yet. So all I did was just slide the styrofoam out and looked at it. So this will kind of like me doing it all over again. As you can see, everything's still taped down and beautiful. Okay, so let's see what we got going here. As is with all E-Flight and FMS planes, everything is nicely packed down in there, all reinforced, all secured, so you're not going to have any issues. Honest. With things sliding around and breaking and shipping. At least they shouldn't anyways. Isn't that a nasty looking pocket knife? It's vicious. Vicious. Absolutely vicious. Okay. Alright. So let's see what we got going in the box. We got the two these two pieces of save this kind of foam I mean yeah your space might be a premium but save this this is a great thing to when you don't want to use a plane stand you can take pieces of foam like this to set down and set a wing on it or a fuselage on it that way you don't um, damage those parts during assembly um, here is the little this is a little stick on or glue on uh, like a camera antenna pod that would on the side of the fuselage you'll see that hanging down this is the one thing that breaks on almost all um, ATNRC because it hangs down in front of the fuselage and you you know it, easy for it to get knocked off but luckily even if you were to set this this e-flight plane down as rich at RC informers has demonstrated in his videos even if you have this thing set down with its gear up the nose is up enough to where this still will hit the ground. So you're not going to have to worry about um, it getting pressure on it. Now, the main wing. This is wonderful. Quick connect, so it's going to be extremely simple. Gear is already installed. As you can see, all the wiring is covered by these uh, sticked on uh, tape. So you don't see the ugly wiring. You've got nice split flaps here. Everything is already installed. And from and there's been several videos on this plane already, including builds and maidens. And everyone says that trim is perfect from the box. So I'm going to go with that. Go ahead and take all the ordnance out. You've got all your ordnance just stuck down in here, and uh, very cool. Very, and this isn't just that, you know, these puffed out foam things. These actually have ri uh, rivets and detail and, and paint, and they look really nice. They're not just, you know, fake looking. They're, they're, they're yes, they're fake, obviously, but they're, they are very good looking. They're, they've, they've, they've taken some time. More uh, pod guns. And just so you know, whenever, just a tip. These particular fuel tanks or missiles, these are the ones that go furthest in, uh, inbound between, uh, underneath, you got your landing gear, between the landing gear and the fuselage, these are the ones that go closest in. So, let's see. Got all of our, okay, okay, folks. Part count for screws. Four bolts and a bind plug. And then all the little no-step um, stickers to put on a different place give you that scale of detail. Manual is not underneath, it's on the side. So you can't miss that. Take more of this foam out. Okay. They've even got protection foam laying on top of the fuselage that doesn't even, it just, just like it doesn't really touch anything. It's just there because. Very nice canopy with Looks like one real nice air hole in there. And people say, why would you have an air hole? Because you don't get in there. When you have this, when you, especially if you live in the south, when you have your plane sitting at the field and it's sitting out, that sun, just like you sit in a car, I don't care if it's, you know, how, how cold it is, 
Oh, there's another air hole right there. When um, when you have your plane sitting out in the sun, that sun beats down on. Typically, the foam that is inside the cam is not as dense as this outside foam. So it will. You ever seen the term gatoring? Heard the term gatoring? That's where the foam expands. It looks like little, little be uh, circles. That's where the foams expand, and, and it, it'll look good. I mean, it doesn't affect the performance, but it doesn't look good. So they put these air up to vent that, so you won't have as much gathering. You won't have as much dis distortion in the foam. Before we get the fuse out, we've also got both of our rudders already. Um, they already look like they're trimmed out perfect. Of course, we'll check that out. Now, you do have to glue your rudder onto your elevator. Here is the elevator. The nice thing about it, they don't already have this stuff painted. Remember, if, if, you, if you're going to glue two parts together and it's painted, you need to uh, sandpaper the, the paint away so that uh, the glue has something to stick sticks to the foam, not the paint. Because if you stick it to the paint, take it up in the air and get some pressure on it, guess what? The paint separates. Well, what, guess what else separates? That part. And now you've got a flying pieces and just a large piece of foam that's about to be debris. So there's your elevator. Okay, nothing else down there. Any little pockets or anything before, before we uh, pull out the main event here. All right. Oh boy. Look at this beauty here. Go ahead and pull the foam out of the way. Make sure there's nothing else stuck in there. Oh, there's another nice, nice squishy piece of the foam that I want to keep over there. Alright. Oh boy, look at that. Look at that. Twin EDFs with 11 bladed fans right there. Got your um, nice big battery bay. Uh, unlike the A10 that, that you can get from Dynam, this A10's, this is all hard plastic. This is not just a little touch of plastic and the rest of the foam tube. No, this is quality. This is quality. I'm not trying to bash Dynam's, but Dynam's are a whole different ballgame. Um, you get what you pay for, it, folks. That's just a cardinal rule. You get yes, you're going to pay for more, pay more for e-flight planes, but you're going to get a better quality and a better chance at having a successful flight than you will with a, a lot of diamonds. Now, you people are hardcore diamonds, Bitco hobby. Don't get mad at me. Um, the trade-off with that is your Bitco or the Dynam planes are usually a whole lot cheaper. Okay. But you're going to have to do some work. You're going to have to do some work and, and some modeling and stuff and you get them to fly them right. Once they fly right, though, they're awesome planes. Very durable. E-flight planes, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, no, well, at least with my experience. And I've now, with my last count, I have 88 planes. Well, 87. And with one on the way. So, and the majority of them are E-flight. And I've had nothing but good experiences with my E-flight planes. The only plane... That I ever had a bad experience on Z Flight was the I Icon A5 when it first came out. Oh, by the way, that's there's your battery hatch, not your battery hatch. There's your hatch that protects your receiver that has a nice extension to put your bind plug in, so you don't have to go doing some sort of weird act in order to get that in there. Very nicely secure receiver. But anyways, back to my story. Oh, I love the detail. Very, very. I'll tell you that some of this compressed foam is so is so compressed and so hard and so uh, sturdy it feels like hard plastic. Okay. Right there is where that that antenna or that uh, pod is going to attach. Well, anyways, the only airplane I had a bad experience with right off the bat was with that uh, the Icon A5. Um, I had a little bit of experience under my belt. And I knew how to fly them. And uh, was down at the lake, I was, I was, there was a maiden on it. I had never flown it before, but I knew it, it was, I didn't have any, I had full confidence in it. 
took off, started banking to the uh, left to line up for a nice pattern. And I was maybe 75 feet off the ground, off the water surface. And all of a sudden, she just spiraled right in the lake. I mean, didn't even, no warning, no uh, error, nothing came up to, to, and nothing to indicate there was anything wrong. I mean, I was flying, and there was really no wind. All of a sudden, she just, right in the ground. I mean, like, what happened? And it turns out it was just a bad receiver. Well, when the plane hit, she went in full speed. I don't know why, but the throttle locked, and she went right in into uh, full speed in the, in the water. And when, when you hit the water from 75 feet up going full speed with a plane, it's like hitting concrete. Well, the plane obliterated into four big sections. A guy on a jet ski saw the situation, went over, picked it up, brought it to me. And uh, luckily, I had my wife with me. I had um, I had, had it, took several pictures. Um, I, hadn't, I wasn't videotaping because I wasn't on the website. I wasn't running the YouTube channel at the time. But um, explained the situation to Horizon Hobby. It told them what I did. My wife said, this is what she saw. This is what I saw. And you know what they did? They said, obviously, it, was something, it wasn't your error. You had everything right. You had the CG checked. I, you know. And so, so they sent me out a whole new plane. An entirely new plane. And I flew the dog mess out of that one. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm not saying that's always going to happen, but I would just say, hey, here's what happened. Here's what didn't. This is the conditions. This is who was with me. And they said, you know what? Since you bought it from us, you know, we're going to give you a new plane. So that's what they did. That's been years ago. So not everybody has great experiences like that. I just myself have, have been treated very well. Well, anyways, um, that's the E-Flight A-10. You've got a very low part count. Um... You are going to have to do some gluing, okay? You're going to have to glue your elevator onto the bottom and rudders on each side. And uh, we'll do a build video on that, but um, have patience with that. And I highly suggest that the annual calls out for, I think, medium CA, foam say CA. Um, but um, I'm going to use foam tack. I'm a big believer in foam tack, and I also... Um, Agree with Rich at RC Informer. Um, to me, uh, CA will over time get brittle, and uh, you have to check it. Whereas uh, foam tack and uh, actually the uh, same thing as foam tack, the Yoohoo Pour that you can get. This is you know in America we use foam tack. Everywhere else in the world they use this Yoohoo Pour or that Chinese glue that you get in all the kits. Um, it's just rubber cement, basically. It's just foam-safe rubber cement. Um, but with foam tack, you know, there's certain things you have to do. You attach, let go, attach, let go, attach, let go, and then pull it apart for uh, like a minute. Let them strings and let oxygen get in there. And then you press it in for good, and she's good forever. Um, but one word of caution with foam tack. If you just put a glob on a bunch of foam tack, slap two pieces of foam together, and walk away, guess what? Foam tack does just the opposite. Yes, it will attack, but it, it'll make the foam like almost like goo. So follow the instructions on foam tack. It's got to have that air. It's got to have those strings, okay? Otherwise, it'll damage your foam. So ask me how I know. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, there you go. Um, thank you so much for watching. Like I said, this is just the very simple unboxing. This is going to be a very easy build. The hardest part will be gluing the tail on and that's not hard at all so uh, thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and uh, god bless you bye